Good afternoon. Happy Easter still. So after Easter Saturday, the Saturday of the Easter octave, the vigil of Divine Mercy Sunday, continuing to celebrate the joy of the resurrection, the new life of Christ. For this reason, we're also continuing our reflection series, Imagination in Action, that during Lent, we really looked at, I think, in a sense, our own personal spiritual life. How do we encounter that saving and transforming power of Jesus Christ? Now, moving into Easter season, which will go up through Pentecost, we're going to be looking more at what does that mean in terms of the mission of a parish or the mission of the church? That our mission is something more than just an individual thing, but it's part of a wider effort. So again, we ourselves seek to encounter that salvation from Christ, forgiveness, new life, transforming power of Christ, one that builds us up and strengthens us. But then we're sent out. And there's kind of four pillars of the way that the early church did this. How did they continue this um, life that had begun? This is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. This is right after Pentecost, which is, the, in a sense, the birthday of the church, when the apostles are really fully transformed and sent out to begin this mission. Uh, I shouldn't say fully transformed, as there's still growth even as they go forth. But um, it speaks of the four kind of, again, I call them pillars or main actions that they devoted themselves to. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. So these four things. So we're going to be looking at these. So prayer, we actually already looked at um, during Lent. So I'll kind of, if you want, you can refer back to those reflections. But these other three, the teaching of the apostles, you know, to understand the faith handed on by the apostles, the breaking of bread, which means more than just uh, a meal, but it refers to a specific ritual of breaking the bread, blessing, giving to them, the Eucharist, which we'll talk about next week uh, with the connection with the Emmaus, and then fellowship. So that's our topic for today, fellowship. They devoted themselves to fellowship. Seems maybe strange. What does that mean? There's different words that can be used to translate this word, community, fellowship, common life, that it points to that positive community among the early Christians that they devoted really to each other. That I think there's also then an external aspect is that they also devoted themselves to works of mercy. That it was not just a fellowship they saw to be limited to themselves, but to be extended from their community into the world. So that for us, again, there's a kind of an internal aspect of it, that part of the life and mission of the church and the parish is to form a community where we can go and be strengthened and nourished and um, support one another, but also so that from that community we can be a positive force of the love of God in the world. For my media source this week, I actually want to look at uh, two movies, Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So these are kind of a two-part movie series. Um, some spoilers here if you haven't seen them, although it's been a few years. Endgame came out uh, in April of 2019, so two years ago. Avengers Endgame um, was released this weekend, liturgically, on the uh, weekend of Divine Mercy. So actually, I saw it on Divine Mercy Sunday, which was a very fitting day, because I think that the image of Divine Mercy Sunday, or I should say the message of Divine Mercy Sunday, the message that we see in Endgame, and this concept of fellowship all have strong connections that the villain in this two-part series is Thanos. Thanos is a very powerful alien that um, is seeking the Infinity Stones, which are these sources of power that he can put together and use them to snap, and his goal is to wipe out half of life in the galaxy, in the universe. And his argument is that by wiping out half of everything, it will allow the other half to thrive. That he's concerned that there's too much strain on the resources of the galaxy, so he wants to get this great power so that he can eliminate half of the competition, so to speak. That he can then allow that other half to have, in effect, twice as many resources because now the other half of, the, of not just humanity, but all life is gone. 
And so, uh, again, spoilers uh, here, but he succeeds at the end of Infinity War um, in destroying half of life. And then Endgame is the way in which they're able, in a sense, to kind of reverse this, to restore that other half. What I think is very interesting is that the name Thanos, T-H-A-N-O-S, comes from the Greek word death. I think in many ways we can see Thanos as an embodiment of what Pope John Paul II called the culture of death, and then the Avengers in the way of the, con- of the culture of life, which culture is connected with fellowship as well. Culture is what type of, um, what are the kind of that binding structure of our fellowship or community? Is that building up or is it destroying? That Thanos' way of looking at the world is, again, through competition that ultimately other people are our enemy and that they are competing and taking things from us and that it would be better for us to be able to eliminate people. And now he does it randomly, so he doesn't want to play favorites, um, but that we should eliminate others so that we ourselves can have more. This is kind of the mindset of his approach to life. And this is what John Paul II sees in the culture of death, that it's a culture about seeing others as competition, seeing destruction as a way forward. What is interesting, and I think the way to best um, summarize the problem with Thanos' thinking, from our perspective, is that if he had this great power that was allowed to destroy so much, he also had the power to create. And we actually see that in Endgame, that this uh, Infinity Gauntlet that he puts together does have the power to create. Uh, Why did he not create twice as many resources. If he was concerned that there was not enough to go around and he had this great power, why did he think that the only way forward was to destroy and not to create? Again, because he had this unconscious, embedded culture of death mentality. That a culture of life is about, well, if we have a need, how can we create a solution to it? How can we help? How can we give? Um, How can we seek to save life rather than destroy it? That the culture of life is built around a concept of the dignity of the person that, um, you know, there may be cases in which self-defense or something is necessary um, or needed, but that's always, in a sense, a tragedy. There's a sadness when um, there is a need to destroy that instead should seek this way to create, build up, and protect that those that are weak or those that are in need can be um, cared for and supported. That Thanos is very articulate. Thanos is very noble in many ways. That he's very compelling. A lot of people, there is even a movement, a movement Thanos did nothing wrong, um, that fell into this mindset. Again, thinking only in that, in that mindset of competition. That instead, mercy, <laughs> mercy, so I mentioned it came out Divine Mercy Sunday, is kind of a, the foundation of the culture of life. Mercy, the sense that greater power can help those in need, that what we're giving is able to build up. So the Avengers embrace this. Uh, they have a tagline, we don't trade lives, that they use, in the sense that they don't uh, say, well, we're going to uh, kill this person so I can be helped in certain ways. They'll give of themselves, self-sacrificing, Um, but not in the sense of sacrificing another person for their own benefit. Um, That it's a different mindset. So it involves sacrifice, but it's a different approach. It's one that comes out of mercy rather than competition. That in the end, they're able to restore uh, the life. And so it's interesting. So Thanos, one of the things he believes is he believes that after he destroys half of, of, of life, he'll look out, he'll be able to watch the sun rise over a grateful universe. Um, that they'll be grateful um, that he made the sacrifice they were not willing to do or able to make by killing all these other people or eliminating them. That, in fact, what happens is it's not a grateful universe, but a a wounded one. That there's so much that was destroyed, so much potential life structure that was lost, uh, and so that those left behind were scrambling to try to survive. They were left in a very difficult situation, Um, So many of their contacts and supports broken um, that it was not a time of great abundance, but a a time of of great tragedy. 
Instead, when they're able to use the uh, so the go through and you save and restore the people that were lost. Now, ironically, there is the grateful universe <laughs> that it's not that the grateful universe didn't come from what Thanos did, but when what Thanos did was undone, that those who had lost life or seen what life could be without what they had are now grateful to have it restored. What they might have taken for granted before now they can appreciate that there is this this gratitude that again, mercy is something that builds up. So John Paul II, when we look again at that culture of life, it's built on care for those in need, from the womb to natural death, um, that some of the key components of the culture of death are abortion and euthanasia, that they are, um, again, seeing life in a way of competition. And in a certain sense, we can understand that. And again, I think Thanos articulates well why people understand things in that way that the culture of life sees things in a different way in terms of the approach, again, of caring for and nurturing life. And that it's something that, again, is, is about an internal aspect of how do we live in our own family? That do we build up and strengthen other people in our family? Um, sadly, at times, the family might be the opposite, where we experience um, those wounds and brokenness, which can be some of the most painful ones. You know, in our work, our school, whatever it is that we may do, that it's an approach to all of life. So internally, you know, in terms of the groups and the, the things that we're part of, how do we strengthen and support one another, giving rather than taking? Um, Christ, I came not to be served, but to serve. How do we externally, when we look at our community, how do we care for the needs of the poor? How do we care for the needs, um, whether that's material or spiritual, those suffering with, you know, poverty, with sickness, but also with loneliness, with sadness, with, with um, grief. Um, there's many different needs. So we call the corporal and spiritual works of mercy um, as caring for the body and soul. That this is the type of culture that we're invited to build. Um, it's a very difficult one, but it's one that we can begin today. That in a sense, there's more than we could ever do, but in another sense, there's what we're called to do is just start with where we are. I want to use one last uh, illustration from the movie. There is a dialogue with Thor and his mother. Uh, Thor is um, falls into a deep depression uh, after the, to say the least, after the uh, the victory by Thanos, so to speak. Or I should say, actually, they track him down and they they kill Thanos, and and but they're unable to restore things at that time. And Thanos and Thor falls into this deep depression that he failed. Um, Lots of, there's a lot more to say about that. But his mother says a line. She says that you know, he, that we all, in a sense, fall short of who we should be. Maybe who we could be in an ideal world or who other people might um, picture. Who we ourselves might think we wish we were this person. So we can fall short of that um, kind of idealized person. But he says, but the measure of a hero is being who we are, in a sense of, of uh, so it's not about being kind of dispressed depressed or discouraged about the um, things that we can't control or the things we can no longer change, but having that confidence in what we can do. So beginning to build that. So fellowship, um, looking at that culture, how do we see other people? How do we see life? Do we look at it from that kind of, again, positive aspect, that culture of life or kind of that culture of death, that approach of Thanos, of, of the need to destroy rather than to build up? What is it we ourselves can do to build community, to be a positive um, force in that regard, to let God work through us? Because again, these are all parts of fulfilling that mission, that Christ wants to encounter us with saving and transforming love, and that in the work of community is one of the ways um, that that is translated from <laughs> theory into action. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we pray for the world, for our own families, our communities we're a part of, workplace, school, <laughs> friends, but also uh, our parishes, our church, that may strengthen our efforts to build community, fellowship among one another, and that in the world, the world as a whole, may strengthen us in our work of building up that positive community, of allowing the love of God to be manifest in our love of neighbor, 
We pray that especially this Divine Mercy Sunday, we may be inspired by the encounter with your mercy to show mercy to one another. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.